This is the appointed time, and we have a quorum. I don't think uh, today's uh, uh, we ha it has anything to do with um, this bill. Now, this is the bills committee on the banks of a bank of communications, Hong Kong Limited, and measure bill. And let's proceed with election of chair of uh, chairman in accordance with. Rule 21E of the House Rules, we should now elect a chairman. Uh, the nomination should be made orally by one member to be seconded by the by another member, and also ex the nomination should be accepted by the candidate so nominated. Nomination, please. I nominate Mr. Wu Chi Wai, uh, who seconds Dr. Kenneth Long, and also Dr. Pierre Chan uh, also seconds. Mr. Wu, do you accept? Yes. Any other nomination? All right, so Mr. Will, please come forward. Thank you, members. Let's see if we need to elect the deputy chair. No. All right. Let's move on to the agenda proper. Uh, let's invite the administration in, as well as representatives from the Bank of Communications. Uh, let me welcome representatives from the administration and the Bank of Communications. Yes. Let me declare interest. I have direct open, direct pecuniary interest because I am the advice uh, consultant of the Price Coopers. So I'm not going to speak or vote on this bill. Well, since Mr. Ronick Chan has put forward this bill. I'd like him to um, give some opening remarks first. I declare that I represent the banking industry, but I don't have any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. Well, the bill seeks to transfer the uh, retail and private banking businesses from the BOC, Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch, to Bank of Communications Hong Kong. It's set up in Hong Kong and it's been approved by the Hong Kong MA to be a licensed bank in Hong Kong. And it's this uh, bill is similar to previous uh, merger bills of other banks. In July 2015, Mr. Ng Leung Singh moved uh, or tabled a bill um, on Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited Merger Bill, and this one is similar, but because the council entered into prorogation, the bill came to an end without pa being passed. Since we have the new term of legisl new term of the of uh, legislative council, I table this bill once again, and this bill was discussed at the fin panel on financial affairs, as this bill. Is tabled into the council by way of a private bill, and as it touches upon policy issue, I sought written consent from the C in council for tabling of this bill into the council, and the bill was read the first time in the council meeting in May. The bill seeks to transfer the retail and private banking businesses of the BOC Hong Kong branch to BOC Hong Kong. For the retail and private banking businesses, the 
clause provides that the uh, they be transferred to the BOC Hong Kong at um, that specified date, and the board of directors of BOC Hong Kong will be set up, and the capital requirement will be subject to uh, banking legislation in Hong Kong, and customers would also enjoy the same protection as offered for clients in other banks in Hong Kong. I don't think this bill is controversial, Chairman. I also think that this is in line with the development of the banking industry in Hong Kong and in compliance with the banking regulations in Hong Kong. It enhances transparency and the BOC Hong Kong's clients in the retail and private banking businesses and other the suppliers can also be sure that the relevant property and liabilities have been transferred and vested in the BOC Hong Kong. With support from members, I hope that this bill scrutiny can be completed smoothly and the resumption of second reading of the bill can be resumed as soon as possible so that before the, uh, this legislative year we can complete the passage of the bill. Uh, I myself and the representatives of the BOC will be happy to take questions from members on the bill. Thank you. Uh, we discussed this bill last term, but w this table, this bill is tabled to fresh because um, uh, the bill lapsed in the last term. Now, would you please also brief us on the details of the bill? Thank you. Chairman, I will speak in Potohua. I am uh, Shao Fu Gang, Chief Executive of the Bank of Communications Company Limited, Hong Kong branch, and um, I also have with me Ms. Nancy Chen, Alternative Chief Executive, and Mr. Alan Liu, Alternate Chief Executive. I'm happy to be here to brief members on the Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited merger bill. And I'd like to take this opportunity to seek views from members on this bill. As explained just now, the bill seeks to transfer the retail and private banking business of the Bank of Communications Company Limited Hong Kong branch to the Bank of Communications Hong Kong. It shows our long-term commitment to clients in Hong Kong. The retail banking business and private banking business will be uh, transferred to the Bank of Communications Hong Kong, which is a wholly owned subs subsidiary of the BOC, which is part of our stra development strategy. We'd like to uh, enhance the uh, retail and private banking business and also show our long-term commitment to clients and uh, staff in Hong Kong. And we'd like to improve internal governance and compliance. There is a prevailing trend that is for the mainland banks to transfer the retail banking business to the wholly owned subsidiary of the bank in other jurisdictions, it shows that we regard Hong Kong as the uh, top uh, financial market in Asia with the best regulatory system. And we also like to show our long term service commitment to clients and staff in Hong Kong. We continue to serve the public and corporations in Hong Kong as a licensed bank and a local wholly owned subsidiary in Hong Kong. The Bank of Communications Hong Kong will comply with um, the regulations in Hong Kong and will form a board of directors of the BOC Hong Kong. <coughs> And we will be adopting high transparency in governing the bank, uh, and it will also make the bank more local. It will be, and we'll build on the existing foundation, and enhance the bank's uh, governance, and 
compliance. Third point will be open and transparent and provide professional service to clients in Hong Kong. <coughs> After transferring retail and private banking business to the Bank of Communications, Hong Kong clients can benefit. Because the uh, Bank of Communications Hong Kong will focus on providing retail and private banking business, whereas the, um, the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch will continue to provide corporate banking business. The Bank of Communications Hong Kong will build on its existing foundation and provide an, an, uh, improved services and products. To protect clients' interests, the, the Hong Kong branch will minimize the impact on staff during the transfer and will also put um, clients, staff, other, other banks, suppliers, and uh, contracts that are closely related to the, the uh, private banking business first. And The Hong Kong branches clients will automatically become the clients of the uh, BOC Hong Kong without having the need to sign new contracts. And they will also be governed by the laws of Hong Kong. And they will also be regarded as contracts signed uh, under the laws of Hong Kong. This bill ensures the uh, merger. The whole process is open and transparent. And I hope that the and this is also understood by the public clients. We are going to retain all staff of the Hong Kong branch of BOC and BOC Hong Kong. And the terms of employment will remain the same. All the long service and payment and annual leave entitlement will not will remain the same, and the employment will not be terminated because of the merger. The BOC Hong Kong branch and BOC Hong Kong will continue to develop their businesses and will also continue to look after our staff, chairman members. This. Bill is by and large the same as the bill large table uh, last tabled into this council in the last term. The bill, unfortunately, at the time was not passed because the council was paroled. In terms of um, transfer, investing of property and liabilities. And uh, retirement benefits for employees. We there were in-depth discussions. And that concludes my introduction of the Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited Measure Bill. My team and the legal advisor will be happy to take questions from members. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. I'd like to remind members that uh, there's already a very detailed paper in the last time CB bracket 11117 uh, stroke 1516. So uh, you can also go back to this paper for details uh, to have a better understanding of the bill. Now I'd like to open the floor for questions. Mr. Yu Si Wing, please. Uh, five minutes, please. Thank you, Chairman. Well, according to Mr. Shou's um, introduction, well, Hong Kong is a financial center. This is conducive to the banking business in Hong Kong. He said that after the merger, uh, there would be more employees. 
in accordance with your future uh, planning, what kind of a business would you be expanding in Hong Kong, and how many em new employees are you thinking of recruiting? Uh, because I think that this merge uh, should be conducive to Hong Kong and also to the overall business environment in Hong Kong. And I also would like to ask about the um, tax issue. Do you have an estimate on whether there would be any um, impact on taxes? Um, well, um, Mr. Chairman, let me uh, address Mr. Yu's uh, first question. And for the tax question, I would uh, defer to my financial advisor. Well, after um, setting up um, uh, Bank of Communications Hong Kong, you asked whether we would hire more new staff. I have said that uh, with the expansion of our business, we would continue to expand uh, the equipment of local employees. And not only in the new subsidiary in Hong Kong and also in our original Hong Kong branch, we would also be recruiting new staff to expand our business. Hong Kong is an international financial hub. In future, we um, we uh, foresee a very strong um, development with the uh, Belt and Road Initiative and the Taiwan Bay development. Therefore, there would be a huge demand uh, for financial experts. And this will also bring along new opportunities uh, for us to expand our businesses. Therefore, I believe that uh, we would need um, more and more uh, expertise in the financial sector. And we would continue to um, recruit local staff in Hong Kong. Mr. Tam? Thank you, uh, Chairman and member, for your question. In terms of tax uh, for um, the Hong Kong branch, uh, for the private and retail business, on the day of um, of merger, then it would um, use all its uh, profit. at the day of transfer. But after the day of transfer, all the revenue received through retail and banking business would be um, included in the new subsidiary. In the bill, um, clause 7 and 8, it uh, clearly states that if there is any uh, repetitive uh, such as um, tax issues, then the inland revenue will have the right to decide that uh, there would not be any repetition in taxation. Bank of Communications Hong Kong believes that um, there would be um, profit and there would not be any uh, tax loss. Therefore, uh, there should not be any impact on the Hong Kong government. So will the SAR government be receiving more taxes or less taxes. Um, there would not be any difference because in Clause 8, it already said that the profits um, of the Hong Kong branch has already been assessed. And then for any profits or losses after the uh, 
day of transfer would be transferred to Bank of Communications Hong Kong. Uh, Mr. Wang Ting Guang. Thank you, Chairman. The merger bill has already been delayed for over two years. In the last term, I was also present at the discussions and we went through very thorough uh, deliberations on the contents of the bill. I'm sure this is not a precedent uh, because Bank of China has also um, done the same. Bank of Communications um, Hong Kong branch becoming Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited um, is a confidence instilled in the Hong Kong financial market. So um, uh, so with a bank uh, license under 155, I think that this will really be uh, conducive to the business environment. Through this merger, it could um, actually um, save a lot of hassle between the two the the customers. Um, I hope that this could be approved as soon as possible. I'm just uh, um, sharing my views here. Thank you, Mr. James Toe. Thank you. Well, we have a new group of legislators here. In the last term, uh, we have already discussed it and asked many questions and considered many details. I only have a couple of questions I'd like to ask today. Uh, so that we could allow more time for the new members to ask their questions. Mr. Shou just now said that um, the draft is basically the same as the previous one. I want to ask our legal advisor, other than the change in the date 2017, has there been other changes? Because we have already scrutinized the bill in the last term, and I thought that was uh, pretty good. Well, maybe, you know, when I look through it again, I might see a couple of new issues. Uh, but I don't want to, you know, have to go through all the details again. So we're just having a Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch to um, Bank of Communications Hong Kong. So I'm the I'm not going to uh, object to something that I've already consented to previously. So I want to ask the legal adv advisor whether everything remains the same except for the date 2017. If not, can you please point it out so I can pay more attention to um, any new clauses? Legal advisor. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. To, for your question. In this bill, and compared to the one um, last term, we have compared both Chinese and English versions, and we have found um, two changes. In CB bracket one, one one zero one sixteen to seventeen bracket zero one. We have already um, highlighted uh, the two points and um, written a letter to Mr. Chen Zhen Ying, which he has already responded to. The first one, uh, to first revision, is in paragraph C of the definition of excluded property and liabilities in clause two bracket one of the bill. The expression including Treasury is deleted. And another revision in 
clause 6 bracket B of the bill, the expression or any existing contract to which it was a party in respect of the excluded property and liabilities is added. Perhaps the chairman can invite Mr. Chan or um, B or Bank of Communications uh, to explain why these changes are necessary. Well, I have um, explained in the letter. The first one is a technical amendment, and the other a revision is that uh, there are some outstanding instructions of other banks uh, which should remain the same with Bank of Communications. I suggest that the bank, a legal advisor of Bank of Communications uh, to um, explain to us on these two revisions. Ms. Lee, please. Thank you, Mr. Chen and Mr. To for your questions. For A, for revision A, For the definition of excluded property and liabilities, the expression including treasury is deleted. Because when we reconsidered the bill, we scrutinized the bill and we believe that um, uh, when we use the term other business, it, or, it already is very broad and therefore there is no need to include the term including treasury because the include doesn't include all other businesses. And we believe that um, it is um, generic enough to cover all um, all the other businesses. So we don't believe that treasury should be especially highlighted. For revision B, uh, I would like to use spend some time to explain it. Uh, this is in clause um, 6B of the bill. The merger bill um, um, is uh, to capture contracts for which uh, Bank of Communications, Hong Kong branch, or um, Bank of Communications com um, Company Limited is not a party, but such a contract relates to the undertaking of the bank. For example, if a retail customer gives a standing instruction to HSBC to transfer a specified amount from the customer's HSBC account to a bank account in the name of the same retail customer opened with Bank of Communications, a company limited Hong Kong branch, and because Hong Kong, uh, because Bank of Communications is not a party of that contract, so when the merger takes into effect, that uh, document, there would be a reference to that bank account number in the HSBC standing instruction that would be changed to the customer same account which would be transferred from Bank of Communications Limited Hong Kong branch to Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited. Well, so this is um, the example that I would like to raise. In this revision, we included um, the expression in the bracket for this purpose. Uh, there would be exclusions in our bill, which would be excluding the property and liabilities of Bank of Communications Company Limited. So, so that means that if the customer has a contract with um, Bank of Communications and and there is a retail bank account. Then the contract, if it is related to the undertakings 
of the Bank of Communications Hong Kong would also become like a account uh, with the same reference number with the effect of the bill. Perhaps a legal advisor can supplement on this point in relation to the response from the legal advisor of Bank of Communications. We want to make sure that uh, the same protection be given to clients after the merger. In relation to these two changes, I agree with the first one, that is the deletion of the words including Treasury, because this is not an exhaustive list, so if the words including Treasury are deleted, it will not affect the effect of the provision. After after listening to the bank's explanation on the second change, perhaps they can provide more specific examples because the change seeks to make sure that all contracts are covered in this bill. I think members would like to know what examples are relevant. In the bracket, it refers to excluded property and liabilities. And after they've been excluded, does it mean that in the transfer they are not included? So why is there the need to uh, make this supplementary provision? Thank you, Ms. Tam. Well, this clause is rather complex, but the meaning is like I explained, because the intention of paragraph 6 is to capture contracts for which the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch or the Bank of Communications Limited is not a party to such contracts, but to give effect to the contracts, and that's the intention. Now, when we read the merger bill, broadly speaking, we can divide the uh, Hong Kong branch businesses into three uh, areas, retail, private banking, and corporate banking and other businesses. The transfer specified in the merger bill only involves the first and the second category. That is to say, the retail and private banking business will be transferred from the Hong Kong branch to the Bank of Communications Hong Kong. And the corporate banking business and other business will stay with the Hong Kong branch. So all contracts related to the undertakings of the Bank of Communications should have the bank as the party to the contract. And if we do not include this clarification reference in bracket, then Clause 6B of the bill will not cover contracts for which Bank of Communications is a party. Let me give you one more example. If the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch has a contract with a customer in in the undertakings of the bank, which is a loan contract, then in the loan contract it may specify that the client or the director of the client as a person if he holds an account with the bank of communications it will be used as um, a pledge so that means this will not be transferred this will stay with the hong kong branch because this is a loan taken out in its corporation banking business
if we do not amend this provision, then this will not be covered. That is why, under the undertakings of the Bank of Communications, the client's account in which there is a contract with the Bank of Communications will not, our Hong Kong branch will not be transferred to the Bank of Communications Hong Kong. I want to follow up on this. There are two conditions, right? You are transferring two businesses to Bank of Communications Hong Kong, and for contracts related to these two businesses, but then the Bank of Communications is not a party to. You need to transfer to the Bank of Communications Hong Kong. Uh, yes, for the reference in the contract, yes. Yes, that's the first example, the HSBC. For example, if somebody gives a standing auto pay instruction of $500 from an HSBC account to a Bank of Communications account, then it will have to be changed to Bank of Communications Hong Kong in the future because uh, there is not a contract, there is only a auto pay instruction. Now this relates to the retail or private banking business, but let's say if it is something unrelated to the two businesses and that uh, there is a contract for which the Bank of Communications is not a party, then will it be transferred because of this reference? My answer is no, because if you refer to Clause 6, at the outset, it already states that this is in relation to the undertaking. And in this merger bill, the definition of undertaking is the transfer is the transfer from the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch to Bank of Communications Hong Kong. So let me give you another example. I'm just well. Let's say if uh, there is a trust. Let's say if I've drawn up a will, and I would like to transfer all my prop or I would like to appoint um, the Bank of Communications as the administrator of my will. So it's not well is it or is it not related to retail or private banking business? Thank you, Mr Toll, thank you, Chairman. We have to consider whether the client is one under retail or private banking. If that is the case and it is related, well, then that's really complex. Last term, I asked whether it is well defined. First, whether the client understands whether he is a client under the bank's retail or private banking business or other businesses. And at another level, a third party may be affected. For example, the beneficiary may be affected. Let's say if somebody dies, and before that he had he uh, appointed the uh, point uh, the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch as the trustee, which is Hong uh, Bank of Communications Hong Kong, and then if the if that person then dies, he will not know if the rights will be affected. And let's say if the um, issue, then if the issues then refer to this ordinance, will they know clearly whether that is true? Uh, I don't recall. It seems that last time you also answered this question. Is it that it, he should be informed before the date, or is it that the transfer can be made at any time, or? that at any time you can choose not to accept or what? I don't understand. Thank you, Mr. Cho. Thank you, Chairman. Well, let me take your question first, and the bank's representative can supplement if necessary. As I understand, when a client 
opens an account. Well, we have um, three businesses, retail, private, and corporate banking. The client's identity will de determine which category it falls into. So uh, if it clearly retail in nature, then he is a client of retail business. And if the client's asset meets the threshold for private banking, then at the time of um, account opening, it's clear that this client is a private banking client. The same applies to corporate banking. So the client status determines which scope of business he falls under. Well, I'm sorry, I need to think about the more extreme examples and the worst scenarios and then work backward. Now, it may be very complex. Let's say if somebody is rich, say you have a rich client, um, at the end, uh, he may no longer be rich and he has uh, set up a will before. When he dies, uh, only $500 are left, and then the Bank of Communications Hong Kong may decide not to uh, take up his instruction. Well, you can also have wrecked to riches cases, and then uh, somebody poor may uh, win Mark 6 and then dies. And then you may say that he is not eligible, even though a will has been drawn up with you as a trustee. So would it be the case that you can decide whether to act as a trustee for those more so-called profitable wills or that there will still be a chance for, the, for you to choose, that is to say? For individual customers, according to the procedure and according to the um, ordinance, an individual can only be regarded as a client of retail banking business or private banking business. An individual client will never be a corporate banking client. So there is a clear distinction. So uh, for the ambiguous clients we're talking about, say, smaller companies, whether the small company should be regarded as um, the account holder of a retail banking business or a corporate banking, and we conduct assessments at, at the open uh, at the account opening stage. Now, first of all, for individuals, things are clear. That's the first point. And then, second point, my understanding is this: and the bank can supplement. Let's say at the time when the account is, is opened. It's a retail banking client, and if the he, uh, he his assets and grow, then the client may be eligible to become a private banking client. But still, the bank has to inform the client that um, he may be transferred to the private banking business because the service fees, etc., will not be may not be the same. Well, I don't think it's necessary um, in the context of this bill. So for individuals, it's either retail or private banking business, which means that um, they will be transferred to the subsidiary uh, anyway. I will let other members ask questions first. But let me ask a question first. It's very simple. During the merger, would that be a mechanism for clients to choose? not to be transferred to the subsidiary. Let's say if the client believes that it, it's safer to stay with the mainland bank, I want to know whether there is any opt-out mechanism. Will the client be informed, Mr. Shaw? We do have this option at the bank if the client is one unwilling to transfer the account to Bank of Hong Kong to Bank of Communications Hong Kong, then they don't have to. So it's not mandatory. No. Or if um, a customer is afraid that after the transfer 
or after the transfer, if he is not satisfied with the uh, service, then he can also reach, um, withdraw his account. Mr. James Toe. Well, so after the transfer, maybe uh, due due to various reasons. Well, according to my understanding, um, so you would appoint a day for the uh, transfer. So you would notify your clients in advance, right? I don't know um, how long the advance period would be. So uh, as uh, Mr. Sho said, um, if I don't like it, I can still uh, withdraw my account. But you need some time for the customers to withdraw the account. Well, I don't remember whether I asked the same question before. Maybe you can reply it again. Well, let's say you have already set an appointed date. So if I want to withdraw my account or I want to transfer my account to another bank, how much time do I have to handle these matters? Well, yes, you know, uh, this bill has has um, been um, put up here for two years. Now, everything you know should already be dealt with. But some people may live deep in the mountains, you know, like in the sub, uh, rural areas in San Francisco, like the case before in San Francisco. Well, Chairman, let me try to address Mr. Toh's uh, question. So two months before the opening of um, Bank of Communications Hong Kong, uh, we would notify the customers. I think uh, we've already gazetted this two years ago, so the public uh, knows of um, this. They just don't know when the exact date would be. So once we are clear of the appointed date, then we will notify all the customers. Oh yes, okay, so two two months in advance. Uh, Chairman, well, Bank of Communications is a listed company in Hong Kong. So when we started um, legislation procedures, uh, Bank of Communications also issued notification and customers and the public should already have known of um, this uh, plan through different channels. Oh, thank you. I'd like to follow up on taxation matters. Uh, I just have some doubt. Although you said that um, the taxes should have already been assessed before the appointed day occurs, but you know you should be most clear about the bookkeeping. Well, I'm just joking. I'm not sorry. I'm, I, you know, I try to think of the worst scenario and then to think of, you know, whether there would be any cons to the employees. So you can pick within this year a day and so it might affect how well the the way how you put it in the books might affect um the tax you need to pay before the appointed day. Well, of course, you know, this is only one off, but I worry about this because from what I heard, you said it will not affect uh, taxation. Then I'm, I apologize to say that I do not agree. Now, let me um, invite the financial advisor to address this question. Thank you, Mr. Cho, for your question. We have considered um, this element in Clause 8. In the bill, especially in bracket five, we said that um, any result in tax relief by deduction, depreciation, allowance, or other means 
given to the banks. Oh, let me give you an example. Let's say the Hong Kong branch can deduct the depreciation once. Our uh, depreciation can be claimed all around the year, but for the subsidiary, let's say the transfer is done in the middle of the year, then um, the subsidiary will also receive the same depreciation um, tax relief, and it might seem that the inland revenue would receive less tax, but actually. The Commissioner of Inland Revenue can decide, having regard to all relevant facts, that the depreciation uh, relief could only be granted to um, the banks as the Commissioner deem fit. But because the transfer itself In clause seven, already said that um, the undertakings would be transferred on the appointed day, and there will not be any external or internal loss. Or uh, so, if you include both clause seven and clause eight bracket five, that would ensure. The uh, taxation by IRD and the commissioner will have the ultimate decision. Well, we didn't invite the commissioner of inland revenue to attend the meeting, so you know I can only believe in this. So, can you well? I'm sure that. Uh, can you tell us whether this is also included in the in the Bank of China merger previously? Or maybe um, did you add this in because the Hong Kong government has already made this clear in their views earlier? Is this included because of um, the government's views? Uh, was this supported by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority? Well, thank you, uh, Mr. To, for your question. Well, my understanding is that clause eight, one, and four are very similar to um, other merger bills. And Clause 5 was included at a later date to ensure that the IRD could um, charge all um, taxes as deemed fit. So, did, so was it included in the bank BOC merger bill as well? I think uh, no. Uh, maybe we can invite uh, Ms. Chung to address this question. Thank you uh, for your questions. We have consulted the relevant government departments and the legal department, and that included the IRD. After the IRD has viewed or scrutinized the bill, they felt that it would not affect um, chargeable taxes. Clause 8, once it becomes legislation, Uh, for retail and private banking, Bank of Communications Hong Kong will be seen as the same entity as Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch, so that will not affect chargeable taxes. Any other questions from members? Any follow up questions? Um, let's, well, we're basically. Um, Oh yes, Miss Lee, you would like to supplement? Yes. Uh, 
or a member asked uh, whether there are any differences with this bill and the previous one, and we've already explained that there are two um, revisions. I'd like to um, point out to members that with the approval of the chief executive and closer to the date of notification. I don't think we need to scrutinize it clause by clause. Oh, yes. Uh, so can, can can you allow her to finish speaking first? Yes. Um, I apologize, members. Uh, I'm going to very fast. I'll be very quick in raising this point. Well, with the approval of the CE and closer to the date of um, Gazette, we understand that the insurance bill has already passed a amendment and that has also been gazetted together with our gazette and the insurance amendment bill has already been gazetted and our merger bill there are three parts in which insurance is mentioned namely in um, corporate banking business retail banking business and private banking business so these three businesses would would be a business also provided by um, insurance agents and um, this would also be included in the um, in the work of um, insurance companies we have discussed this point last time but uh, when we were at the bills committee last time um, there was no clear or specified effective date of the insurance amendment bill, but today um, the effective date of the insurance amendment bill has been um, specified as June twentieth. So we now need to look into whether um, we can complete. Um, with the legislation before that date or because um, because um, if we need to take reference from the insurance bill then um, it would be difficult it will be different well if there is such a scenario um, there are um, many industries that rely on the insurance bill uh, when it becomes effective, then of course all legislation should rely on the in on the new bill. Well, there is a little bit of time lapse here, but can we use the same principle to apply to it instead of having to move CSAs? Or do we have to move a CSA? Um, to seek approval because we don't know when that like, when that oh that has that has already been approved. Oh, legal advisor, so can you give us a view, legal opinion? Oh, thank you. In relation to the insurance company's uh, bill, I think the banks would need to. Consider because uh, there's only a mention of the definition of the insurance bill, and there is no mention of the contents. So it would depend on uh, whether you have uh, forecasted such. A uh, revision, and whether 
there is any difference with your initial uh, view. Well, if there is no difference, then you wouldn't need to move any CSAs because you know this is quite broad. Um, it just said that the definition would depend on the um, effective insurance company bill. Guy, tell me in Thai. Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chen. And thank you, Ms. Tam, for the explanation. So, if we complete the legislative procedure after the 26th of June, then this reference could be incorrect because by then the title of the ordinance would have changed. Maybe we can uh, go back and check, but the point is, as far as the legislative procedure is concerned, well, we expect this the resumption of the second reading debate at the council meeting of the 5th of the 12th of July. So this should take place after the 26th of June anyway. If there is indeed any change, uh, it will either be the 5th or 12th of July, and the deadline for making amendment is uh, either the end of June or the 3rd of July, depending on um, the uh, when the uh, resumption of second reading will take place. By then, the bill would have been would have been passed. Uh, we would only be waiting for the uh, effective date. And if an, an amendment is necessary, then we can bear in mind the deadline for moving uh, amendment. Otherwise, this should take place after the legislation comes into operation. So perhaps, Ms. Lee, you can go back and check whether you need to submit an amendment. If, and we will also see whether we need to move a CSA for this. If so, we'll give notice. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman, for explaining the timetable. Now that we're aware of the timetable, we will co consider this issue with the bank. Are there other questions? If not, well, although I think that we did the same exercise last year, we should just briefly go through the scrutiny. I think Mr. Christopher Zhang and Mr. Wong Ting Kuang's suggestion is for us to go through it chapter by chapter. Let us know what that section is about. Well, let me ask legal advisor if that's all right. Thank you, Chairman. I think the clause by clause scrutiny can be decided by members as to how it should be conducted because of the special circumstances. Last time we already uh, um, discussed this bill in great depth. Well, basically, the Bills Committee completed its work in the last term, but the bill lapsed because um, of the time limit. I just want to know, first of all, are we aware of the latest changes in relation to the bill scrutinized last time and this bill? Are we clear about the differences? If we are, then I think we can go through the bill chapter by chapter in our clause by clause scrutiny exercise. Perhaps we can invite both sides to confirm, apart from the two differences spotted and also the the uh, amendment to the insurance company's ordinance, whether there are other textual changes. Um, Mr. Shaw or Ms. Lee, can you confirm with us? 
that the two bills are the same and that any differences have been disclosed. I will in defer to Ms. Lee to take your question. Comparing to the last uh, merger bills tabled, we have already set out the two major changes for members' consideration. The other difference is the insurance company's ordinance, and we'll consider whether we should make an amendment. Apart from these three points, the bill is the same as the last one. So apart from the three differences, this bill is the same as the last one. And as a result, we accept that basically this bill is highly similar to the last one. And we therefore will proceed to chapter by chapter. Ms. Lee, please. Thank you, Chairman, members. This is the Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited merger bill. The first clause is the short title. Which is the Bank of Communications Hong Kong Limited Merger Bill. The second clause refers to interpretation of terms in this bill. Do we need to go through the terms? Uh, any comments on clauses one and two? No. Clause, clause three provides that the directors may appoint a date. For, uh, as the appointed date for this ordinance, and the date will be gazetted. The appointed date will be gazetted. Any comments? Clause 4 about vesting of undertakings in Bank of Communications Hong Kong. Clause 4 provides that vesting of undertaking uh, provides for the vesting of undertakings. Any questions? No. Clause 5, trust property and wills. This is in relation to all property held in trust by the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch as a trustee, and the trust property and wills will be transferred to the Bank of Communications Hong Kong. Any questions? No. Clause 6. Clause 6 is supplementary provisions. In relation to the undertakings to be transferred, the supplementary provisions make reference to the details of of the uh, undertakings. For example, contracts, agreements, documents, etc., for which the uh, Hong Kong branch is a party or any other documents or contracts for which the bank of uh, the Hong Kong branch is not a party, but then the um, Bank of Communications Hong Kong has an interest. I want to remind members that in relation to 6B, which is a supplementary provision, just now we had uh, quite a long discussion. Are we clear? Thank you. Clause 7. Accounting treatment of Bank of Communications Hong Kong and Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch. It provides that after the transfer, what to do with the accounting treatment of the Bank of Communications Hong Kong and the Bank of Communications Communications Hong Kong branch. No questions? Clause 8, please. Taxation and revenue matters. This clause provides taxation and revenue arrangement after the merger. 
Just now, they've already explained that uh, there will not be any revenue for gone, as far as the government is concerned. Clause nine: contracts of employment. This clause applies to a contract for the employment of any person who is solely engaged in the retail banking business with the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch. So that well, so it will be regarded as a single continuous employment, no break. Clause ten, MPF scheme. Clause ten ensures that after what well, employees after the merger. In Hong, a bank of communications, Hong Kong will enjoy the same benefits as before when they were employees of the Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch. Clause eleven: waiver of prohibition of merger. Some contracts may be. Related to the merger, which may prohibit the merger, and this clause provides that there will be a waiver um, so that the merger will not be affected. No questions from members. Clause twelve. Clause twelve relates to evidence, books, and documents. And also, clause thirteen, part three of the evidence ordinance, and clause fourteen, evidence of transfer and vesting. Clause clauses twelve to fourteen provides that any evidence in favour. Uh, or for or against the uh, Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch would be admissible in evidence, regardless. All right. So this is about evidence, and there are there are relevant provisions in clauses twelve to fourteen. Clause fifteen about interest in land. It refers to the interests of in land held by the Bank of Communications, Hong Kong, um, any interest in land uh, vested in the bank, and And any uh, agreement signed with the landlord or tenant will not be regarded as having um, been forfeited. Clause 16 relates to savings for other enactments. Nothing in this ordinance exempts Bank of Communications Hong Kong, Bank of Communications Hong Kong branch, or any subsidiary from any enactment regulating the carrying on of the business of any of them. Clause 16. No comment from members. Clause 17. Saving for companies. It provides that nothing this ordinance affects the powers of the Bank of Communications Hong Kong to alter its articles of association, and it would not affect the powers of the bank to dispose of its uh, undertakings. Uh, any comments? No. 18. Saving provision. It provides that nothing in this ordinance shall affect or deem to affect the rights of central authorities or the government of Hong Kong as they are under the basic law or the rights of any uh, body, or public or corporate, once it comes into operation. No comment. So that concludes the clause by clause scrutiny. Well, as a matter of formality, I need to ask members. We need to invite deputations to express their views. Do we need to hold a public hearing? I don't think so. It's clear. Uh, we did not have a public hearing last term. Oh, we didn't hold a public hearing last time.
Well, um, we have um, also looked into um, Standard Chartered, um, Dow Hung Bank, and all these um, did not. Um, we did not organize any public hearing, so I don't think there is a need this time as well. So we have uh, completed with clause by clause scrutiny, and the next step would be to resume second reading in LegCo. So would you prefer us to resume second reading on July 5th or 12th? Because um, if you have a preferred date, then it would also affect, you know, um, the dates. Well, if you're not sure yet, maybe we can discuss with Mr. St Mr. Shaw and Mr. Chen later on after your uh, discussions, and then you could report it back to it. Well, July July 12 is our last council meeting. I think I would fight for uh, July 5th. I would um, go through the insurance issues with the legal advisors, and if there is not too many issues, and we would, uh, then we should do it on July fifth. Well, for July fifth, then we would need to submit it to a um, House Committee on June sixteenth, which is next Friday. So please be mindful of the timetable, because if we are going to resume second reading on July twelfth, then the deadline to sub mid to the HC would be June 23rd. So um, please um, take note of the time. It's very tight. So um, thank you all for attending today's meeting and for helping us to go through the bill. And we hope to complete all the procedures uh, before the end of this term. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you.